going to see the torque speed characteristics of three phase induction motor. So, what is our experiment title? Torque speed characteristics of three phase induction motor. Okay, so we are going to plot at the end of the experiment the characteristics between torque on x axis and speed on y axis. So, for that, so what we are doing here? So, we have a three phase supply. Okay, so that three phase supply we are connecting to the induction motor. So, we have the machine here and this is called connection board. Okay, so here we have the supply of three phase. What is the three phase supply voltage? 415 volts. Three phase AC supply of 50 hertz frequency. Okay, so this supply we are going to connect to the stator. So, which part of the machine we are giving the supply? Stator part. So, now are we giving any supply to rotor? No. But how the energy is transferred from stator to rotor that we discussed in theory already. Okay. So now we are connecting supply to the stator but not directly. We are connecting through the DOL starter. Okay. So this supply is being connected to input of the DOL starter and from the DOL starter we are connecting to the stator of the three phase induction motor. So here we can see in three phase supply terminals we have R, Y, B and neutral. Okay. R, Y, B and neutral. So this supply we are connecting to the TPST switch and we have three fuses here in respect to R, Y, B phases. So we have three fuses and output of that fuses connected to the DVL starter input and from the DVL starter output we are connected here. So these are the DVL starter terminals. So here we have R, Y, B DVL starter terminals, here R, Y, B stator terminals, R, Y, B rotor terminals. Okay. So, output of the DOL starter terminals are connected to the stator through which we have a voltmeter and ammeter. So, the purpose of this voltmeter to measure the phase voltage between any consecutive phases like in between RY or we can connect in between YB or we can connect in between RB. But here according to the circuit we are connecting the voltmeter in between R and Y. We can see from the R we are taking two wires. One is connected to the ammeter common and other one is connected to the voltmeter common. Okay. From the ammeter other end, okay, from the ammeter other end, that is from the range, so we are connecting to the R of the stator. Okay. R terminal of the stator. Okay. Now with that R phase is completed. Okay. So what are all connected in Y phase? So voltmeter other end voltmeter other end and y phase of the stator these two are connected with the y phase okay so with that y phase connections are also done next coming to the b phase the dvl starter b terminal is directly connected to the stator b terminal we can see this is making the connection between dvl starter b to stator b now we are closing the rotor terminals with two wires as we are making the rotor in star configuration, as our stator is connected in delta configuration, so to make the star configuration of rotor, so we are taking two wires and the two wires joining together and they are connected at Y and the other ends are connected at R and B. So these two are making your rotor in star configuration. That means your rotor is closed now. Now when started giving the supply to the stator, then RMF will be produced, rotating magnetic field will be produced that rotating magnetic field will be going to interact with the rotor conductors. Then EMF will be induced. Okay, with that changing rotating magnetic field, interacting with the rotor bars or rotor conductors, so then EMF will be induced in the rotor. So that EMF having the closed path, so then that leads to the current flow in the rotor. So that results the current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field, it experiences a force. That is our basic principle of the motor. So as now your rotor is carrying some current and it is placed in the presence of magnetic field which is produced by the stator. So therefore, the rotor starts rotating. So along with the rotor, the shaft is being connected to the rotor. So the shaft will rotate and with that shaft or to that shaft, we have connected a brake drum. So this rotating part is called as brake drum and these two are called as spring balances to know the net weight or net amount of force applied on this rotating brake drum we have two spring balances 
and these two are called pulleys. So in order to increase the load or in order to decrease the load, we can operate these pulleys. So when we rotate in clockwise direction, we can say that we are applying the load. So this belt will be tightened on its rotating brake drum. So we can say that we are increasing the load when we are rotating in clockwise direction. And if you want to reduce the load or if you want to remove the load, then we have to rotate in anti-clockwise direction. Okay, clear? So now we will start the experiment. So here we have the DOL starter. What is meant by DOL starter? It's nothing but direct online starter. So the purpose of this direct online starter is, which is helping to start the induction motor. Okay, here we can see the red color button and the green color button. To turn on, we use the green color button. Here it is written on. So to off this machine, when the experiment is completed, to turn off this machine, we use the off button. Okay. So here we have the T-paste switch before the DOL starter. So once we make the all connections, okay, and proper and tight, so then we will check whether the connections are made proper and tight and what is the other precaution in this experiment we should make sure that the uh, load should be zero or we can say the belt on the pulley should be removed it should be free the belt should be free before turning on the experiment okay so here we have the tpst switch okay we can turn on the tpst switch so we just please turn on it now now we can see indications are there that means we have the available of three phase supply so these are indicating we have the available of three phase supply. So now to turn on the three phase induction motor. So next we need to turn on the D well starter. So please press the D well starter on button. Observe ammeter. So observe ammeter. You can see the current is suddenly increased to maximum value and then it came to minimum. Okay. So that whatever the to that value it came. So the purpose of this D well starter is to reduce the or limit the starting current to the machine. Suppose if we give high current during the starting period of the machine, so then what will happen? The machine may rotate with the high speed. So then that leads to the damage of the motor. So this DOL starter is helping to limit the starting current. The purpose of DOL starter is to limit the starting current so that the starting speed will be in control or in the limits. So therefore, machine will be turned on safely. Okay, so that is the purpose of this DOL startup. Okay. Now we can note down the reading as no load reading. Okay. So here we can see the some current that is in between zero and uh, 1 it is so 0 0.5 let it as no load current okay and what about the voltage it is 100 into 4 400 volts as no load voltage okay so voltage will not change basically so it will be noted as always constant but the current will change when we increase the load so here we can observe some parameters so if we increase the load current will increase means machine will draw the more current the motor will take the more amount of electrical input that means voltage is constant which parameter is going to vary the current parameter is going to vary so as the increment in load results the increment in current now what about this s1 s2 readings it will increase so initially when we kept under no load condition this s1 s2 are indicating 0 and 0 but when we add the load when we add the load, then the spring suspensions or the spring balances or the two meters will indicate some amount of reading. We need to note down these two readings so in order to calculate the torque. And later we have a formula that is 9.81 into S1 minus S2 into small r. That is the radius of this rotating brake drum. Okay, where small r is the radius of this rotating brake drum and 9.81 is the acceleration due to gravity and S1, S2 r is free two spring balances reading. Later we will take the net amount of S1, S2 like S1 subtracted from S2. Okay. So we will take that value and we will multiply with 9.81 and the radius to get the top. And what about the speed? How we will measure the speed? Speed we will measure by using tachometer. So every time 
at every load instant. We will apply the load by looking into the ammeter and we will note down the speed and we will note down the S1 and S2 readings and then we will apply the next load. So gradually here we will increase the load in steps of 0.5 amperes. So what is the maximum current we can apply? What is the rated current of the machine? 4.7. But we won't apply up to the 4.7. We will apply up to the 3.5 or 3 amperes. Why? Because if we apply the maximum current, there is a chance the motor can damage. So we will apply only in safe limits or in the limits. So that is up to 3.5. So now it is showing 0.5. Now next reading will be 1. Next reading will be 1.5. And next reading will be at 2 amperes. And next will be at 2.5. And 3, 3.5. So at every load point, what we are noting down, we are noting down S1, S2 and speed. Clear? Now we can we do the experiment? Right. Now make the uh, no load readings. Make the note of no load readings. Measure the speed. Fourteen ninety two. 1492 is the speed. Now, is there any load on the machine? No. no. So, therefore, ring balances readings we will take it as 0 and 0. Both S1 and S2 both are 0, 0. Okay? So, next. So, keep the tachometer in operant pocket and keep the hand here and look at the ammeter and apply the next load. How to rotate the pulley in clockwise or anti-clockwise? Clockwise. So till one. one ampere. This big line itself is a one ampere. Yeah, one notch. One notch. If five amperes connection is below below scale, you are ten amperes connection is above scale. Now, at 1 ampere, we have to make a note of S1 and S2. So, this is S1 and this is S2. S1 and S2. S1 and S2. S1 and S2. S1 and S2. 2.6 is S1. What about S2? 1.8. 1.8. So, ID into 25.